triple C. I'ma make them bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really got the heat. You're gonna be in a mountain of your own. Like nobody's gonna be able to touch that. Beat. And that, that that's something that I was trying to reach. You're gonna get there first. You're, you're gonna be in a mountain, you're gonna be in an island. What's about that one? Ila Sua. E ninguém tá convidado, cara. We raising all of the stakes, make no mistake Either you stay in your place or we put in you on a plate Look at our face, we put the fear in the dirt We had to struggle for change, pick up the pace We put in infinite work, that's why we stay getting paid Y'all running late, we moving on to the next You still been stuck in the phase, there's no debate We draw the line in the sand, we say it straight to your face They on the break, so we put the team on our back We took the city to state, what it's gonna take Another S on our chest, another beat in the grave We in the face Switching it up, they can't predict what we're saying. Come out the cage, the blood on the show. Let's go! They don't want to figure us out. They think we came in a place. They're in the snakes. They're trying to give us a curse. They want us taking a bait. But that's okay. We keep on dodging the bull. We keep on saying Olay. Blocking the way. Thinking we flipping reverse. But we keep rushing the gate. Stopping the way. It's looking easy to take. We're not afraid. We put the fear in their bones. Ain't no more running away. Fucking looks, man. Right looks. Yeah. You know what I'm Fly, yeah. flyweight at, Be at at Bellator now is gonna be fucking ridiculous. Dude. He's going for that four. Nah, he can yeah. make it. <laughs> he's gotta, he's gotta, he's gotta make 35. We gotta, we're going after the half the week. Yeah, there's a lot to give to Patricia, but I think Patricia already knows it all. And I don't say that about a lot of people. You know, I get guys like Jones, Wei Lee. David Figueredo, Demetrius Johnson, people that come out to actually train with me. But I, I feel like the person that I've learned from the most has been Patricio. Real smart guy, real smart guy. Like he's a, there's, he's a killer, but he's a calculated killer. Like, like the, he's programmed to do certain things strategically to take you out the game. And then the stuff like that, I, I, I admire that watching, uh, watching him train watch him the way he does his camps, little things like that. So the only thing that really that I do here is just, hey, Patricio, maybe you should stretch a little bit more. Like little things that could be a little different because he has more experience than me. And I can respect that. I could just be like, if anything, I think I'm taking more from him than he takes from me. He's the underrated, the most underrated champion, killer, that has ever graced this damn earth, you know? Um, Look at his submission rate. Look at his knockout rate. Look at the fact that he's going to three different divisions. If you can't acknowledge this guy as one of the greatest of all time, you don't really understand mixed martial arts. You really don't understand mixed martial arts.
first thing I ask is like, just what, what is it like getting to work with Henry, and like, what are, what are his, um, like, what has he kind of learned or taken from working with him? Muita troca de informação. O Sr. Rudeu é um amigo pessoal. É um cara que eu aprendo muito. Às vezes, que eu, quando eu posso, ensino alguma coisa também. Então, tem uma troca muito ali. E estou muito feliz. A presença dele aqui me deixa animado. É um cara que já bateu o Sérgio. Então, tem muito a trazer para o nosso treino. Ele disse que a experiência que tem o Sr. Rudeu aqui é incrível. Ele é um amigo de longo tempo, personal friend. And every time Sehudu comes here, he has a lot to edit, teaching so much. And he also uh, very glad when he had a chance to teach something to Sehudu because it's uh, exchanging the information experience. And uh, nothing better than to have a guy who already beat Sergio Perez here and then a close friend. So that makes him feel more comfortable. I'm enjoying to have you in class, bro. That shows like you're a real champion. You just fought two weeks ago and got back into the... Uh, uh, training room and grind with the team. That's like a shows how bad you want that back. And I know you can be become a champion again. You know what I mean? You, you will. You will. Thank with you, the coach. I, I appreciate. Yeah, we're gonna get this back, bro. Even, really even though you even though you coached against me one time. Yeah, but We're now good, right? now I want to help you if I can because you know like I'm on Thank the you. other side, man. People, brothers. It's burning. I'm burning, bro. That, and that's probably what I needed, coach. You know, I needed uh, I needed uh, an, an actual chip on my shoulder. I hate mm -hmm. second. Mm -hmm. I hate second. I hate you know second. What? Ups and downs, when you go down, that's when you realize who you are yeah. and how bad you won. And we all know yeah. you've done that multiple times and you're going to do that again, yeah. for sure. Yeah, exactly. So it's exciting, but it's also a pain in the ass. Yeah. You know, because I know. Because uh -huh. I know what it is. Yeah. So yeah. I'm good. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. The, the dream's not over, you know? Nope. Nope. You're so young. You still have a lot to go, you know what I mean? Like, you can do. How old are you now? Uh, I'd like to tell people 26. 26. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, but, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm 30. I'm 30. I'm 39. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, man. Good to yeah. see you. Good to meet you in person now, yeah. not, a, not across the cage. Yeah. Até hoje ele descarregou no rim, por isso que ele é bom. A história, a história meia, meia carregada. You want me to translate? You tell, you gotta help me. So, 1993. I've heard the story. About 1992, I believe. 1992. 93. 93. That was say out of say, quasi say. Tell your version. You want me to say it? Say it again. Uh, so, he said um, it was 1993. They, no preferia. They they lived way out in, the, in like the country, by themselves. And they, he was a captain of the fire department. But there was a rumor that he had weapons. So five gangsters, five criminals, armed criminals, came to get those weapons. And they came to armed and dangerous. It was two in the morning. He heard the he heard people coming in around the house, circling the house. And he woke up his wife gave her a 38 with five bullets in it. Sent her to the room with the kids and said, protect them. He heard people coming in through the back door, the kitchen door, and he went with a 357 and a 45 Colt and three magazines. And he went to protect uh, them coming in through the back door. And then the mother, who's never shot before, he had Patricio Patricki and I think four cousins all staying in the room right underneath the window and there was a uh, a gangster or criminal coming in through the window and if he jumps through this window he jumps right on top of patrice and patricky who are like five and six years old at the time and his mom took a shot with the 38 and they all ran off and then uh, his dad came in and started shooting outside the windows at nobody he didn't see anybody it was 2 in the morning. When, uh, when it became 4.20 in the morning, he wanted to go look because the sun, the sun was rising. So he told Patricio to stay because Patricio, when they heard the shot, the kids all ran. But Patricio was in a state of shock and sat there sitting on the bed where the bullet went right above his head. Uh, and he wanted to see what happened. It was 4.20 in the morning. 
and he said, Patrice, you stay. And Patrice didn't stay. He followed him. So when they went and looked underneath the window, they found out that she indeed hit the guy right underneath his eye and killed him. And Patricio saw this guy's brains blown out. And ever since then, he's had like trouble sleeping. He can't sleep alone. And for the next week, him and his wife would stay up all, all night. They had a water uh, cooler. Not what is that called? Water. It's like a water tank. With a, yes. It's like a septic tank. Yes. So they emptied the septic tank and emptied the water out, stood in it, and sat there with weapons because the, the leader of the gang was selling, selling, sending 40 more gangsters to come get them. So he went and got more guns. And, uh, him and his wife for two days sat inside that water tank waiting for them to come and then when she got tired he brought another one of his partners from the military to also protect him and uh, ever since then those 40 guys never came but he was ready because he said I would ne I'm never leaving nobody's gonna force me out from my house so um, flash forward is Patrizio has never been able to sleep alone Patricky and Patricio always had slept in the same room, but then Patricky, at a young age, got uh, had his first baby. So then he moved out of the house. So then Patricio, who can't sleep alone, would go grab his niece to sleep with after practice because he can't sleep alone because of what happened, that traumatic uh, situation. Uh, I'd like to add that years later, after he won the world title, I took him to Kansas to get stem cells at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. And we were in like cowboy country. And they uh, invited real cowboys to come for a shooting contest. So they come for a shooting contest. They come with real weapons. They're coming up with cowboy hats, spurs, and horses. Patricio versus five real cowboys in Kansas. They set up a shooting contest. 100 yards, a bottle of Coke, 300 yards, a watermelon, you know, something over here, something over there. And Patricio against four, five real cowboys beat them all. And then I was like, holy shit, where did you learn how to shoot? Because I always thought he got it from his dad, who's a colonel. And he said, I get it from my mom. And then he told me this story, how she at point blank in the middle of the night, in order to save her family, took a shot, one shot, one kill, killed the guys, invaded her house. That story is like a burn moment for Patricio Pitbull and, and that trauma, that adversity for me is what's leading him today in this, he's turned that adversity into becoming the greatest pound for pound fighter in Bellator history attempted to become the first three vi three division uh, world champion in MMA history uh, and you know when he does that we're gonna put him on goat mountain and he's gonna be Patricio 3d pitbull three division champion never been done stories that story is uh, such a impacting impactful story.